Hey there, it's Daniel Priestley. In the last video, we talked about coming up with a concept for your scorecard. Now we're gonna come up with some categories so that you can have the key categories that you're gonna score people against in uh, built into your scorecard. So categories are like key ingredients for achieving a result. So if you think about this goal that somebody has, these are gonna be the main things that they have to be on track with in order to achieve their big goal. So let's have a look at some examples. If you had like the good health scorecard, you probably would have categories like diet, exercise, sleep, and hydration. Or if you had the smooth running business scorecard, you'd probably have things like sales, admin operations, and strategy or vision. Let's say you had a happy dog scorecard. I've put in here walks, toys, food, training. These are the key ingredients for having a happy dog, right? So whatever it is that is the big goal, you want to have between two and five things that are the main key ingredients that people have to be on track with in order to be achieving that bigger goal. So have a think about what are the key ingredients that people need in order to get the desired result that you've got in the concept. Now, when you've thought these through, you can go into the score up software, you can click on the button that says categories, and you can just put between two and seven categories that people are gonna score themselves against. Now, if you're struggling with the software at all, there are some separate videos that really walk you through nice and slow as to how to click the buttons and enter in the information and to actually use the software. So really practical and tactical implementation videos. My videos are very much strategic. So we're just gonna talk about the actual strategy of running the scorecard marketing campaign. The next question is questions. So now you've got some categories. We wanna have a look at what are the questions that each category is gonna ask in order to give a score for that category. So typically you have between three and seven questions per category. So let's say you've got three categories and you do three questions per category, that would add up to about nine questions for the whole scorecard. So you wanna have three to seven questions per category. You wanna have two to, to five or two to seven categories. And the questions need to be simple questions that test for that category. So if the category was sleep, uh, you might ask, do you get more than seven hours of sleep per night? Or you might say, does your sleep often get disturbed? Do you wake up feeling tired? Do you sleep in a room that's cool, quiet, and dark? So these could be questions that you've come up with for people to self-assess whether they are getting good sleep. Let's have a look at another example. Let's imagine the good business scorecard. So the, the desired outcome is to have a good business. The category is sales. And we're gonna ask some questions about sales. So do you do sales role play? Do you track your sales conversions? Do you dislike sales and try to avoid it if possible? Can you easily handle common objections that prospects raise? So these are questions that help people to self-assess whether they're on track in the category of sales. Now, what will actually happen is when the scorecard's running live, people won't know which category they're answering questions about. And all the questions will probably be presented quite randomly. And the magic is that people are answering lots of questions about all sorts of things. And then the scorecard collects it at the end and gives people an overall score for each category. So they don't know which category it relates to in, in the short term. It's only once they complete the score app scorecard that they then get to see how they scored on each of the categories. You might also notice here that some of the questions I've asked are questions where yes is a really good thing. And some of the questions are questions where no is a good thing. So for example, do you do sales role play? If the answer is yes, that's gonna be increasing the score that someone has for that category. But if the answer to the question, do you dislike sales and try to avoid it if possible, if people answer yes to that, that's gonna subtract points from their overall score. So it's good to mix that up a little bit and have some questions that are positive and some questions that are negative when it comes to answering the uh, yes. Here's another example. The scorecard concept would be wealth in retirement. So that's the desired outcome to have wealth in retirement. And the category is protecting your money. So I've got questions here like, do you have income protection insurance? Do you have diversified investments? Do you feel worried that your money is exposed to unnecessary risk? That's one of those questions, as I mentioned, where no is the right answer. Um, so I've got those questions there. So that you get the idea that it's pretty simple. You've got a scorecard concept, which is the big goal. You've got the categories, which are the key ingredients. And then you've got the questions that are the ways that you test to see whether people are on track or not. So I've got another example here on marketing. Do you measure your average cost per lead? Are you proud of your website and your brochure? So these are great questions uh, to be asking people. 
So when you've thought of your questions, and you can do this live in the draft mode of your scorecard, you just click on the button called questions, and then you just go in and add questions. And it's pretty easy to just add a question. You can add questions that are multiple choice if you want to, yes, no, or maybe, sliding scale, right? All of those questions are available if you want to use those questions. My feeling is the best type of questions, and this is from my experience, are the ones that are very simple to answer without people having to go anywhere and check. They can be answered with a yes or a no. So questions like, do you, does this happen? Have you ever, are you, can you? Those are all questions that are gonna be yes or no questions. And they relate to very simple facts. So a question like, did you go to the gym this week is a simple fact. People don't have to you know, go and do any research for that. They can actually just very quickly answer that question. Here's some questions that I don't think are great questions. Anything that pushes people towards a sale, and it's quite obvious that your question is kind of doing that. So uh, things like, would you be interested in hiring a coach is a little bit salesy because it obviously implies that if you answer yes to that, someone's going to call you up and try and sell you coaching. It doesn't feel like it's a self-assessment. It feels like it's just kind of leading the witness towards a desired outcome. Or questions that are too complex to answer off the top of your head. So if I said, is your phone plan due for renewal in the next three months? Most people don't know that off the top of their head. So they'd have to check and that means they're going to go away and maybe come back, maybe. Also questions that can't be answered in a word. So questions like what, how, or why questions where you need to answer with a sentence. These aren't self-assessment questions. They're not going to help you in this process. So as I said, you go in and you can put those questions in. And once your survey is live, once your scorecard is live, you're going to actually get feedback from the system that will tell you which questions are answered too slow or which questions get abandoned. And you'll be able to actually improve them as you go anyway. So you don't have to get this 100% right straight away. You can actually put in some good ones that are directionally correct. And then the software will actually move you towards improving the scorecard over time. So it's pretty simple. Get a good concept, get some categories that help you to know whether you're on track for achieving an outcome that you want, and then ask some questions that tell you whether people are on track with those categories. I hope that's helpful and I'll see you in the next video.